All right, so good evening uh, and welcome to an unusual episode of Coding with Jess. Uh, we're not going to be doing any coding tonight, uh, not talking about JavaScript, not talking about Redwood JS, not doing any Ruby on Rails. Um, it's a little bit uh, of a departure in many ways, and including the time. Instead of 11 a.m. Eastern on a Thursday, it's currently 10 o'clock Eastern. My kids are in bed. Um, I've got a couple hours to talk about Bitcoin trading with my brother Brent, uh, whose uh, Twitter name is indeed Brent Token, if that gives you an idea of his general <laughs> interests in life. Uh, and so a couple things tonight before I let Brent introduce himself. Um, so we are going to talk. Uh, so uh, Bitcoin trading is something that's fairly new to me, but I've learned a ton about it from Brent. And we have conversations back and forth about it all the time on uh, over DM and I'm um, just chatting about it. I, and I have a bunch of questions uh, for him all the time. And so I, I figured it might be fun for me to actually ask some of those questions live tonight and kind of share some of my learnings over the last few months of about technical analysis, about Bitcoin, and kind of talk about my uh, current understanding of what Bitcoin is and it, what it represents uh, sans all the hype, since I am definitely not a Bitcoin fanboy. Um, but I've definitely learned learned a lot about it. So anyway, um, Britt, why don't you introduce yourself and kind of tell us a little bit about, um, uh, yeah, about what about you? Yeah, so um, I think I've even done one of your videos with you. Didn't we do a Minecraft one or something? We did do a Minecraft one, yep. But unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. that, one, that one is lost to the ages because I didn't know how to use Twitch oh, at no. the time. And so it didn't get actually saved. <laughs> So it's gone. That one was, we'll make a better one. Yeah, totally. uh, especially since everybody's kids are probably actively playing right now and they have yeah. questions. But um, what? My name's Brent, and, and I am uh, I'm Jess's brother, and uh, we were the original hacker um, hacker hustler combo way back in the day when we were. I think I was going to school and getting requests for CDs that Jess would go on to Hotline and download the songs, because there were no laws about songs back then, and we would burn them on our 1X external. There weren't. My wife's looking at me going, mm. There were laws. No, I, I'm telling <laughs> they, 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 they came at Napster. Do you remember that? Yep. Oh, yeah. Before yeah. that, they had no they had no digital rights coverage. Mm -hmm. So, like, when we were doing it, like, this was, like, when people were like, oh, yeah. people were doing that? Um, and we had a 1X external CD burner. Remember that? Oh, man. Oh, yeah. 77 oh, minutes yeah. to burn a CD. Yeah. <laughs> so I would go to school, take requests, come home, just to download them. We had our little enterprise going right there. Mm -hmm. um, so I am a uh, product manager. I'm a technical product manager. I'm a light coder. I'm a massive uh, um, decentralist enthusiast, Bitcoin enthusiast. I'm not a Bitcoin maximalist for anyone who knows what that means. Um, the good news about this, this, this thing is that most of the people that are watching this are probably, I was asking just right before this are probably developers. Um, they come from developer culture. Uh, they work at companies where they're building software. The good news is I'm not FinTech. I'm actually a developer too. I come from developer cultures and I have been trading on the side, uh, for about 10 years while working at software companies. So. If you were to cut me open, developer blood would come out, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, awesome. But I happened to uh, trade for a long time. Uh, you know, we all have our hobbies, and that was mine. 2017, I actually re went into a crypto company, and we'll get into that later. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and that's where I really, you know, it's one thing to learn something as a hobby, and another because you have to learn it for your daily job, you know? Mm -hmm. And yeah. I was hiring people for that job that also didn't know anything about crypto. And I had to teach them, the person who didn't know anything about crypto. So as a channel that encourages learning, the best way to do something is to be like, you have to learn this so that you have to teach it in like two months. And yeah. most of my learning honestly came from teaching it. So yeah. anyways. Yeah, no, that's, that's one of the reasons. Me. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I'm excited to have you on the show tonight uh, is because I feel like you're actually pretty good at explaining this stuff. You've been really helpful explaining it to me for sure. Um, so yeah, let me give you guys kind of like a, his Brick gave a little bit of our personal history, but let me give kind of a history relative to uh, to Forex and Bitcoin and stuff like that. So for me, um, Bitcoin, blockchain, all of that as a technology has seemed very uh, full of hype 
for for many years, and I wasn't quite sure uh, what it was actually good for, if anything. Um, and so um, it wasn't. In fact, Brent, I'm, Brent's talking about being a uh, trading currencies on the side and that kind of stuff for about ten years. Uh, Brent would tell me about that stuff, and really all I heard when he talked about it was wah 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 wah, <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> and it was just you know forex this, Bitcoin that, crypto this, blockchain that. And I kind of listened politely, but didn't really pay that much attention. And I certainly didn't learn anything. Um, that all changed around January 1st of this year for me. So I had a little bit of free cash and was interested in investing in something. And I noticed that the Square or the Cash app from Square on my phone, uh, I was actually sending somebody some money for something. And I noticed that that app allowed you to buy Bitcoin. And I thought... Ah, what the heck? I'll buy a little bit of Bitcoin. So I bought it, didn't think anything else about it. The next day, Bitcoin jumped like 40%. And so obviously I turned around and sold the Bitcoin I had just purchased. Uh, and in under a week, I made 40% on that money I invested. And that really piqued my interest. I was like, what just happened? Like I took a little <laughs> bit of money. I put it into something. It increased in value by a tremendous amount. And then I sold it. And I had money left over. Like that was the strangest experience. So I'm I'm not a big stock trader or anything like that. So what this kind of set me on a journey is like I want to I want to know more about this. I want to understand why it works, how it works, um, if it's possible to do that again. Why is it possible to do that again? Uh, and so that was I knew that I could always reach out to Brent. And so I started kind of peppering him with questions. And over the last couple of months, he's kind of taken me on the intro to Bitcoin course. And so that's kind of what we'll be talking a little bit about tonight. Um, but yeah, Brent, tell me about, tell me a little bit about your story. What actually mm -hmm. got you interested in Forex to begin with? Like, I know this was about what? 10 years ago, oh, but man. I don't, why? Gotta rewind. Hey. Why Forex? Um, well, Forex, Forex. So 10 years ago is probably about when I got like my Twitter account. And, uh, and so I was, I wasn't that far out of college and my wife and I, uh, we, we were living in Arizona at that time. So uh, and we, we both gotten jobs and I was in between jobs and, um, I think I was trying to get my second job. And while I was at home trying to get my second job, um, uh, Twitter was just as distracting back then as it is now. <laughs> and, uh, and so I started seeing some people, um, talking about, uh, this, this trading that they're doing on their computers running like, um, running this really advanced analytical stuff. And I was just like, this sounds cool. We, you gotta remember at that time, we were only two years out from 2008's recession. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were still in it technically, right. actually. Um, and uh, so we, we all knew that there was so much about the financial markets that was impactful and mm -hmm. that we had no clue. Like I didn't know what the big short meant. Like that movie wasn't out yet. Like we didn't understand. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand what like mortgages rolled into big funding packages that people bought from each other was. Right. No one, I mean, only financial people really knew that. So there was this hot wild thing back then. And this was before Bitcoin was, Bitcoin was existing by the way. But this is before it was hot and wild. So this, mm -hmm. this was, so, and it was called Forex and people had been doing Forex for just a couple of years, really in the way that they were doing it. Mm -hmm. um, and so I said, okay, like I'm nerdy, I'm technical, like I, I'm, I'll bite. I have some time, I'm in between jobs. Um, and so uh, somebody sent me to a resource called Baby Pips. I just checked, it's still there. Baby Pips, and I'm pulling it up right now. Okay, yeah, babypips.com. Baby Right. I think I remember and, you actually sending me this website. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I didn't do anything with it at all, but I'm pretty sure you yeah. sent this to me. I'm telling you, like it, it was like uh, if you take in like uh, coding classes online on uh -huh. like Code Academy or or Udemy or something like that. Um, it's it it ha it's a very like online instructional kind of thing like that. If they okay. still have that course, it's ten years old. I'm sure it's terrible, but it was extreme. The content in it was extremely well done. Someone okay. did a really good job of teaching it. And what it basically did is it taught what Forex is. For those who don't know what Forex is, Forex stands for foreign exchange. Okay. And all it is is it's buying one currency versus another. This is this is these are real world currencies like my dollar or my euro. When people say 
Forex. So that's called fiat. I'm going to say fiat because we're going to talk about fiat a lot. Um, and if you're not hearing fiat right now, I would be surprised. Uh, but um, that must be your Twitter when, feed. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. I don't know how. Um, but anyways, fiat, fiat just means that it's a government banked cash that's printed like paper. Government backed. Um, okay, gotcha. Yeah. So that yep, is that. Um, so is fiat the same thing as a sovereign currency? Is are those the same thing, or do they mean different things? Uh, so they they're correlated, not not causationally related. So like like if you're a sovereign, you're not necessarily a uh, fiat, and if you're not a, if you're a fiat, you're not necessarily sovereign either. But the fiats that run most of the economy in the world uh -huh. are sovereign. Got it. Okay. So they they the and and when people say forex, ninety nine point nine percent of the time they're referring to the top six currencies, which would be like the dollar, the euro, I think like the Australian dollar, the British pound. I want to say the Japanese. Yeah. What is it like a yen? Yeah. And yeah. I I don't even know the other ones, but like they're referring to those. There's about six six primary currencies that they see, and okay. another like 15 that are tradable and like and that's that's about it because all you're doing is you're buying one currency versus another that's it and and for forex you're just trading the price of a dollar versus the price of a euro how they compare so at the end of the day it's just trading it's it's uh is it, seeing is how trading the right word for it or is it like is it u.s is trading the right word for it or is like exchange so, the right word? Cause you're like, aren't you like turning a dollar so into, you're like trading a dollar in for a, True. a, a certain number of units of another currency. Right. Like that's what's right, actually right. happening. So yeah, you could, no. you could say so trading you, you is really in the good, sense of trading. It you in. have a good, uh, you have a really good point. Actually for a long time, exchanging is what was happening. You're right. And, and for the most part, if you go, if you go take 20 of your bucks and say, Hey, I want 20 bucks in euros. You're mm -hmm. exchanging that. You're not trading that. That's an exchange. Okay. And the reason it's called it trading is because, and for a long time, the reason why Forex wasn't really considered a thing that was reputable or even doable is because when people are trading Forex, most of the time they're trading on leverage. So this is leverage or margin trading. You, if you don't have five million dollars to sit and exchange back and forth, or twenty million dollars, or however much, you're not going to make any kind of significant returns in forex. Like it's been between the dollar to the euro has been between a dollar ten cents and a dollar forty cents for the last fifteen years. Oh, you mean um, basically that the there's not enough fluctuations between the currencies no. that, that you're going to make much money trading and you yep. probably lose something in fees as yeah, well. Yeah. Like if you're just swapping currency back and forth, it's, you're not going to, uh, it, it's not, so gonna you'd have to have a tremendously large base for the percentage mm -hmm. of that to actually make you any money. Okay. Right. Gotcha. So, All right, so that's Forex. No forex. So, no forex. so and you learned about leverage. it. Yep. And yep. go ahead. What took you from Forex to like, and you, you learned about it, you played with it for a while. I think you played it like a game, right? Like you didn't actually use yeah. real money. Um, I traded with fake money at first, uh -huh. made a whole bunch of money off of it, like fake, fake right. money, but trades, the trades were all real because uh, they run off the same real engine. And, uh, and then I decided to do it with some real money. Uh, but like I said a second ago, there's a real problem with that when it comes to currency versus currency. I have to have significant uh -huh. money, right? Um, right. Margin right. trading is what makes it trading because margin trading gets into debt. And I'm not going to go down a long rabbit hole because it's going to get confusing. But yeah. look at it this way. Your dollar is like, when you leverage it, it's like saying, I'm going to take this dollar. And if you run it at 50x leverage mm -hmm. or 10x leverage, mm -hmm. and you're going to actually use this dollar to trade a block of ten dollars, you're going to take the losses or the gains based on that ten dollars. Hmm. So, the reason it's margin, it's weird because you can drop down, and it will cancel out your money. Most people in here are not going to trade margin, and I, I, 
I'm not, this is not financial advice. I'm not saying anything, but like, you shouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Don't, that's not even like Hmm. it's, well, good thing is I still don't understand it. So it's actually not possible for me to do it when I don't understand but, it. <laughs> yeah. So what took so you from I, I Forex? Like five and 10 margins. Okay. Well, what I'm right. curious and what I took you from Forex to it. Bitcoin. I said, so I did Forex for a while, but okay. small amounts. Okay. I did it at like 50 bucks because that's all I had. I was broke straight out of college, right? Right. And, um, and I made my 50 bucks into 300 and I was like, man, if this was 50,000, um, but you know, still small stuff for a long time, just sure. playing with a little bit thinking, remember, I used to tell you this all the time. Uh, eventually I'm just going to retire and trade Forex. Yep. <laughs> because I wanted, you know, a big retirement fund of cash to be able to move around because, you know, even that leverage is 50 bucks is not, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and so I did that for a long time. Like I just kept up with markets. I really enjoyed the technical analysis of it, which will mm-hmm. a lot of the technical analysis started coming heavy, like current day technical analysis that you'll see mm-hmm. started coming in with Forex and some other things. Gotcha. Um, lever- the, the concept of leveraging things uh, started exploding then too. And part of our issue with our crash and recession in 2009 was the way we leveraged the assets of homes. Gotcha. I'm going to stop right there and not go deeper. <laughs> All right. Google so give me your, that. give me your Bitcoin yeah. uh, story. So, how did you, how did you come into Bitcoin? Crypto so that kind I of stuff. traded for the longest time. And then you now at the end of the day, I didn't work in finance. I was building software, mm-hmm. you know, and one um, thing that, well, and I'll say this, I'll go there, but I'll say it. I have a, a personal principle And I'll go as far as to say that I think Jess actually matches this personal principle. And that is that uh, if I sum it up in one sentence, it's that I see a lot of opportunity gaps, a lot of places where people aren't given the same opportunity as someone else, Mm -hmm. right? Some people have privilege, some people don't. Some people just are flat out not given the opportunity because they were happened to be born in a, in a poor country in West Africa or something, right? Mm -hmm. And um, it's always bugged me. And so I've had a personal mission to bridge the, bridge the opportunity gap. Uh, Jess works at a place called Landa currently on this call. Mm-hmm. And uh, it does a lot of work towards that too, by allowing people to learn how to code mm-hmm. that never would normally get that opportunity. Mm-hmm. And so I've always been really, really into these things. Um, so I had worked for a couple startups, 2016, by that time I had some private equity in a couple of them. Um, Jess and I, we grew up in a small town, a blue collar town. Our, t- our parents were both teachers. Mm-hmm. And so we are new to the newer for our family to technology and things like that. And so, um, I realized that there's this huge gap between people that are out there trading stocks and trading equity in companies and, and trading all those things that you're probably even aware of whoever's watching this, because you probably work at a tech company and, and some, it might be a startup. Somebody might be talking about stocks. There's a huge gap between people that are trading these both private and public mm-hmm. and where we came from. Mm-hmm. Right. And as I started learning about it more, I started realizing that like a lot of the private stuff to, to get involved, you had to be accredited. Mm-hmm. You'd be an accredited investor. And I think that's, but that's now somewhere like I think you have to have X amount of dollars for two years. I think it's two hundred fifty thousand or something like that in mm-hmm. in liquid assets or something. It's not it's not cheap. No, I think it's a million in, in liquid assets. I think it's two hundred thousand in revenue in take oh, in, home cash for two years. Yeah, two or three right. years, something like that. Yep. Anyways, I mean it, it's it. And you have to get a you have to get your accountant to like write a letter. In this approval process, yep. income exceeding two hundred thousand dollars in the two most recent years, yep. or joint with a spouse for three hundred thousand, right. and liquid ne- or joint net worth of one million. Wow! There you go. Excluding so, the value the of, of your day, home. <laughs> ex- excluding liquid cash I means they don't consider your home liquid. Yeah. Liquid cash because they want you to be able to you know liquidize yeah. the asset right away. So that's always bugged me. Um, that because when you look at it. 
that comes down to about 1% of the population, 2% of the population meet that. Wow. So, something yeah. insanely small. And people that are trying, here's the thing, for your average person in a small town, blue collar place, when they say, okay, I want to do something more. I want to start a business. I want to invest in capital. I want to do something to get out of this same kind of rut that I have. I want to take a chance. I want to take a financial chance. The only thing that they're told they can do mm -hmm. is go get a bank loan. Mm -hmm. And the bank loan is either going to not qualify them for whatever reason, mm -hmm. or they're going to give them that. And, and they're going, are they going to, are they going to say, you know what, we'll, we'll mess with the numbers a whole lot because we know you're going to fail on this. And we know we're going to come up and try to grab your money back through collections. They're not giving them a viable path, but that's literally the only thing that they have that they can do. Mm -hmm. And they don't know a lot of people that invest in a lot of money because they don't have connections to VC. Cause again, mm -hmm. those two, those two worlds are separate. So you're and you're I, taking me on a you're taking me on a winding journey. At some point, Bitcoin is going to come into this journey. I'm curious it, at which it point it will. It is. <laughs> yes. So like it, it that used to drive me nuts, and um, and there's a lot of red tape. If you the thing about Bitcoin is that it is like the most non red tape thing there is in the planet. Mm -hmm. um, it's not owned by government. It's not owned by people. It's not owned by anyone. It's literally free. And I was approached by somebody at a startup that I had previously worked at that said, hey, mm -hmm. there's this thing going on right now. It's kind of like Bitcoin, but it's like the next level. It's based off of a lot of things called Ethereum. And it's taking stocks, the things that I really cared about that were a lot of people were not able to reach. Mm -hmm. and, and it's turning these into blockchain trackable apps um, uh, assets mm -hmm. and it's opening the door to everyone in the world to get involved. Hmm. Even if you have 20 bucks. Hmm. And I was just like, what is this magical thing you speak of? Yeah. Because awesome. like everyone in the world needs to know about this. Mm -hmm. Now there's a lot of good and bad that came with this. Uh, there's a reason why the United States makes people do be accredited for all of that stuff. ICOs, most people know what that is. It's probably a trigger. That was probably something that was crazy in the last couple of years because the government does regulate the consumer and allow you to not make things that they know are going to be scams. Mm -hmm. And there was a ton of them. There was a lot of scams back then. That's the wild west of any new enterprise thing. There's always mm -hmm. going to be scams in it. Um, and so I worked for a crypto company that helped people launch legitimate tokens uh, which is things like Ethereum. And uh, a lot of the things that we were building, that the companies were building on, were building on Bitcoin, the blockchain, mm -hmm. not Bitcoin, the currency. And I don't know how much we'll dive into this a lot. You can look at Bitcoin as two different things. Mm -hmm. One is an exchange of value, and the other is a database. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's stick with and, the data or the exchange of value. Exchange tonight. of value. Yes, yeah, so we're talking Perfect. about trading. Um, trading, right? Yeah. And, so and did you cool thing was, did you like jump into right. trading Bitcoin right away? Like it sounds like you were interested oh, yeah. technically, and you were saying as like soon this as is I a found tremendous out I opportunity. Could, uh -huh. Yeah. As soon as I found out I could, I was like, I'm in. <laughs> gotcha. So it was an <laughs> so, easy in with your experience. Uh, it was with Forex. easy in. It was easy in. It was, it. and and that's when I realized my experience with Forex ha had already primed me for this. Gotcha. So like, okay, that's where it all came in and connected. I was like, I already understand what people are doing with these wedges, with these trends, with these uh, channels, uh, how they're how they're seeing technical and fundamental analysis, how they're mixing those two, what each of those are. Um, and uh, in the first month I started at that company is when Bitcoin went from 7,000. So this is in November of 2017. Okay. From 7,000 to by the end of December, it was at 20,000. Wow. And okay, so you were, you were there had, during the and, crazy rocket ship of Bitcoin. Yes. Um, let me see. Pull up a and, chart for those and like, who are not Picture this. It. Yes, and and the charts are great. Uh, look at Coinbase Pro. For context, a great one right now would be to open Coinbase why don't you actually Why don't you actually share your screen and kind of walk us through like yeah, yeah. show me the point at which you joined and like show us show us the the rocket ship. 
is prep. Because a lot of this, like a lot of what I want to take away from tonight is like how, what your process is like when you're looking at Bitcoin, mm -hmm. how you look at historicals, like that kind of stuff. So yeah, show show us. Uh, this is a great. Give us some context here. Great time. Let me grab the screen real quick. Sure. And for anybody who's asking, I'll probably say it a couple of times. Jess mentioned it earlier. I'm using Crypto Watch right now, which is a pretty sweet tool. Um, let's see. Where's the screen grab? Come on. Can you just Brent, share? You're better at Zoom. This. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm trying to do. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Here we go. Let's do that one. Perfect. Okay. Um, can you see that? Yep, we got you. So. So here's crypto watch a lot of, I'm not going to get into the details on this. A lot of you, if you're trading already and you're looking at things more than like what Coinbase is showing you, you're probably using something called trading view. You can look at this without going into the details as the same thing as trading view. It's a thing where you can see crypt, but it's focused on cryptos, not everything. Um, all right. So, uh, so yeah, you were telling us at, that you joined in 2017, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. And Bitcoin so, yeah. was the asset that I that I watched go crazy, as most people here. Right. There was lots of crypto at the time, but Bitcoin was the one that that was nuts. There was. There was the one that was really new and popular was Ethereum. Got it. And that we should save for an entirely different video. Because <laughs> that for sure, we could go down a long rabbit hole with that. Um, this is just this. This looks like. This looks like 2017, but it's actually just three days ago. <laughs> it but, sure does uh, look like 2017. That's funny. <laughs> I know that shape really well. Um, yeah. Let's see. Let's see if I can get it. I'll open it. They've changed some of their stuff. It looks a lot better, but it, this used to not be the way to get in. Okay. So here's all the different exchanges. So the list of exchanges, I can see it traded on. I've got a couple of them uh, highlighted. Binance, BitMEX are big ones. Kraken is what I trade on a lot. Coinbase Pro is what people are used to here, maybe. Mm -hmm. It's a great starting point. We'll talk about that later. Um, so let's open that and see some charts, right? So yeah, so take let, us back right to 2017. Here, we're going to do some big rewinds. So right here, if you can see that, I might. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah bump it up a little bit. There you go. There we go. So this right here is going to tell you, these are called candlesticks. Again, we're going to save that for another video let me shrink down some of these um and what these each one of these candlesticks indicate is they are a block of time that happens during that and i and i'll and i'll let you do the rest filling in context clues so right now it's set to every candlestick is 12 hours mm -hmm. so let's rewind it to every candlestick is one week and now what you'll see is you'll see this going back all the way there's 2018 on the bottom. You can see the uh, right there at the bottom. There we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, hey, 100 for 50% padding is not what I want. 50 look good. Maybe let's do 70. This is pretty cool how they can do this, huh? Yeah. Yeah, you can see <laughs> down there at the bottom, there's 2018. Yep, so 2018 right here. Go away. And... I think it's that. There it is. Okay. I just erased one of the other lines, but that's fine. So what you can see right here before 2018 is a lot of not very much, right? It mm -hmm. looks pretty dead. Uh, if you move that out of context, it will make this a lot bigger. Let's see if I can do that easily here. Let's see, like, uh, have it so zoomed in, it's messing with it. There you go. See, when you move it out like this, it actually makes 4,000 look a lot higher because back before it hit 20,000, everything looked a lot. You know, 2,000 looked like this, right? Mm -hmm. Like there, you're moving up from there. Right. And, and so there's actually been previous booms and busts before 2017, but they never got on scale. And so as you move towards 2017, you can see everything else shrink wow. down and it just got crazy. Right. right? So you joined like in here. I and joined then... like, yeah, about right yeah because here's july so i joined right here it was right after oh, man. the first like wow. pop and dip and if you like rewind to right here uh if i rewind it to where you don't see what's about to come up right 
then yeah. people were already going nuts because they were like, oh my gosh, like this thing went from what we were used to of like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, whatever right here, all the way up to 7,000, right? And then it, it started to go down. It went back down to 5,000. Mm -hmm. And they were like, is it going to go again? Is it going to get big again? Like what's going to happen? And uh, by that time, there was already a lot of interest in crypto. So I joined mm -hmm. and let's see. Uh, and then almost immediately after it went from there to parabolic is what people like to call it in the industry where, and probably everybody remembers that because you probably couldn't get on Twitter or the news without seeing something about Bitcoin. If you look yeah. at Google search trends, everything is about Bitcoin. And then of course, a lot of people got involved right here. Yeah. So guess what happened to those people who got involved right here? Oh, they all got they crushed. They go all the way <laughs> it down. It went down. <laughs> mm -hmm. And down, they didn't. Down, down, down. A lot of people were like, it's going to die. I don't know anything about it. Right. So they sold. And so they lost a lot of money. Uh, as you can see, that's changed over time. It's gone back up. Uh, it has not hit this all-time high again. There's a lot that, that goes into this, but mm -hmm. the basic premise is that this cycle Mm -hmm. has happened actually about three or four times now with Bitcoin. Started yeah. when it was 10 and it bounced around 10, $11 and then suddenly exploded to mm -hmm. 100. Wow. And then it went back down to like 50 for like three years. And then mm -hmm. it, it, it bounced between like 50 and 100 for about three years until 2015, 14 or 15. And then guess what? It exploded again, this time to 1,000. Mm -hmm. You know, and then it dropped back down. Yeah. And then and then it, it it kept the cycle going. Got it moved all the way up to like 7,000. And then it w exploded to 20,000. Yep. And then it dropped down and right in here it was all the way back down at 3,000. So that's the lowest it's been since that high. So gotcha. I worked at a crypto company all the way through all of this and there's a lot more assets that are involved than just Bitcoin. Um wow. the the industry largely died right here. Yeah. And when I, I say imagine. died, I mean a lot. I mean, what's happening right now in our markets actually looks like nothing compared to crypto companies were laying off 80, 90% of their workforces. Like wow. a lot of people had made money up here in the big thing and then All didn't know how to sustain up. that. Yeah. It dried up. And, they didn't and diversify things, and then boom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, so, and, and honestly, that's not new. That's been yeah. happening all along, right? So it's let me ask let me ask you a question real quick. So um or like let me point something out. So for those of you who are like looking at this chart, uh at a chart like this for the first time, right? Uh Brent used to send me charts like this all the time. <laughs> they would have like all these funky shapes on it, which he called candlesticks, right? Um, and I didn't know what those meant other than like it's like, why is there not just a line? Like, doesn't it why why does it have this bar? doesn't even make sense. Like, isn't there just like a, doesn't Bitcoin always have a single price that it, that it is? And that should be a line. And so don't answer that question, but that was, these are the thoughts that are going through my head. <laughs> and I'm like, and then he would have all these lines on there and the lines always looked like, uh, like Matt, not like magic, but like he was making up something to fit the shapes of like, look, <laughs> I can like draw a line along the top of these one. And then I can draw a line underneath these. And I, it like, and then he would tell me like, oh, yeah, you know, you can tell what's going to happen because of these lines. And I'm like, that's crazy and doesn't make any sense. Uh, and that can't be real. Um, and so can... so what Brent's describing um, and like what these lines describe are is what Brent, what's called technical analysis. And so um, mm -hmm. I mentioned on the on the Twitter stream that we would or on the Twitter feed that we would actually yes. um, talk a little bit about technical analysis. So. Can you like describe what these lines are and like how you chose mm -hmm. them and, and like what is this technical analysis thing? So a couple of things. I've actually kept this um, pretty clean for a lot of reasons because technical analysis is going to freak a lot of people out. They're going to be like, what, what I got to learn all these things. The truth of the matter is it's actually really simple. Okay. Um, and, you know, it's, it's funny. The drawings you should go look up drawings on there because there was people that would draw things like this that were technical analysis traders. And a lot of them like to refer to themselves in crypto. They like to refer to themselves as shit posters <laughs> because they just get on Twitter and type stupid things. So they would draw pictures like this 
where it would go backwards and then in swirls and they'd be like, and that's what's happening. And they'd be like, you guys are punks. And they were, somebody made a T-Rex face out of this. It was great. Anyways, <laughs> it really does look like that. It feels like that. But the truth of the matter is, is that there's a lot of technical analysis out there. Jess saw that today when he clicked over here on uh, Crypto Watch. Mm -hmm. and open the analysis right here. How do I yeah, this? today was my first time using Crypto Watch. Uh, Brent, I, I've been using Coinbase Pro, and Brent was like, you got to check out Crypto Watch. It's so great. And he'd been saying that for months, but this was the first yep. time I actually opened it up. And I went through this and list, and I'm like, Jeff, I'm what the heck? Goes. There's an alligator <laughs> and a chandelier <laughs> exit and Elder's Force? Like, is this... Is this a list of like parabolic stars? children's toys or video games? <laughs> like, what is this? Zigzag. Mac and D. there's a lot of things. There's a lot of patterns that people name that come in this, like just looking at the, the chart and they name it certain things like they'll, like this right here that I'm using is a basic wedge pattern. Wedge is good to know. Um, in fact, if you walk away from this knowing one thing, no wedge and that's it. Just yeah, I think that would be the one that I would love to to explore tonight because that's the one you taught me yep. most recently. Um, so what's what's a wedge? So a wedge is I'm trying to wonder like how uh, I'm learning their hotkeys too. So I think it's control and click gets rid of the last one. There we go. Yep. Okay, cool. Let's get rid of all of these. Um, so a wedge is basically when you look at a market, mm -hmm. you'll see you'll see lines in this form actually i need to teach one thing before wedge okay uh you'll see trend lines form so you'll notice right here uh -huh. that uh let's see if i can zoom in too there we go that if you that as you look down this mm -hmm. most of these things are kind of getting close to this right it kind of makes that shape doesn't it yeah i mean like i said you can just draw shapes on here arbitrarily you can literally draw <laughs> shapes right now the reason is is that somebody at some point in time has said okay it looks like it's all falling in between this yeah. right now most people in here are programmers so this is why trading trading technical analysis is kind of a lot of people would talk about technical analysis and there's two things technical mm -hmm. analysis and fundamental analysis a lot of people in fundamental analysis would say technical analysis is all bs and it's wizardry that's They're, definitely what it feels like and that's i I want to like yeah. at some point I want to get to the question show show us how to do it and at yeah. some point I want it, towards the end of this I want to talk about why it actually works why because it actually works it okay, doesn't cool. seem so, like it should all this um, is it should right all this is is it's creating patterns right now we'll talk about why it works later yeah but it but right now you're just looking for the pattern and saying okay, okay if it hasn't gone below this on this line then it's not going to continue to go below this. Mm -hmm. uh, and what you learn while doing that is that sometimes it does. And all of these are considered resistance or support lines. Okay. Which just, so the two just different kinds of lines are resistance and support. Right. Uh, which one is support? Support which one is, is right here because it's the. Yep. This one is support. Let's see, let me get the annotation going. Where, where are you, annotation? Uh, oh, you can annotate. Nice. There we go. Draw. Oh, yeah. Oh, gotcha. yeah. So this one right here is, is our support line. I yep. think I got half of it circled. Yep. Um, and the reason it's called a support line is because uh, the, the, as things. And it, and this is the line that breaks. So think of this as like, if this was a house, this is your support beams on the bottom of the house, mm -hmm. right? Everything above it is right here and it's not pushing through this. It continues to reinforce itself and it continues to push through this. That's your support line. Everything is about support lines or resistance lines breaking. And what okay. happens when they do that? And what people would say is as this comes down, as you can see it hit right here and then it goes again right there and again right there, and again right there. Mm -hmm. Those are all uh, times at which the support is proving more and more true and holding up more and more. And so people would say that the support line is getting to be stronger. They would also, as it happens more and more along this line, they would also say there is more downward pressure because just like if you had a big weight on the support beams of your house, it's a lot of weight pushing down on it. Jess saw that today. Mm -hmm. When I told them two days ago, there's a lot of upward pressure mm -hmm. on what we're going to talk about next, which is a resistance line. So everything we talked about right now is a support line. Mm -hmm. Come on. But can't can't a uh, support line be angled the other direction? Can it go this direction? Yes. 
Yeah. So a support line can be yes. supporting upward pressure, right? Right. So what? Like what the pressure uh, along here would be like that I, direction. I don't mm -hmm. know. I think what people uh, call this, and I'm not a. I, I told Jess this earlier too. I, I don't stay completely on track with all the financial terms because sure. I think that they're alienating. Um, but basically, a support line. What they call this is a downward trend support line. Right. Okay. And that's yep. that's pretty obvious okay. why. So yeah, downward trend downward. support line, upward trend support right. line. Got it. Okay. Upward support, trend support line. And a lot of people make support lines based off of right. just price movement right here. So like they would say, uh, for instance, right now, and I'm going to zoom way out. Oops. Right now, there is a support line right here. Can you see that? Oh, yeah. Now, yeah why like, is this a support I, line? Uh, a resistance why is it, line. Uh, it's a resistance line, right? Because it's never yeah. gone above twenty thousand dollars, twenty thousand. Bingo. Cost. But why flat? So somebody's saying, somebody's basically saying, we're saying this is a resistance line because we've never seen it go above this. Got so it. so far, this has repelled it right here, and it won't go above it. Got it. Okay. Unless that resistance line is broken. So Got like it. the most basic resistance lines start just by all time highs or lows, or or you could say you can. And what a trader would call this is they would say this is. The, if you know, you know what floodplains are, and they say like 50 year floodplain, it hasn't yeah. flooded in an area in 50 years. So it's a 50 year floodplain. Well, this is a three year resistance uh, line because it okay. hasn't broken this in Got three it. years. So this actually is a forever resistance line because it's never broken it. Right. Gotcha. But, okay. So let me summarize real quick. So you've got right. resistance lines at the top, support lines mm -hmm. at the bottom. And then support lines can either be uh downward trends or upward trends like and that that mm -hmm. correlates with downward and upward pressure and then a you, you said two you said they get stronger in kind of two ways you said they get stronger the the more times they repel it so exa for example mm -hmm. would be the one that's uh that's that you demonstrated it bounced off of it multiple times and each time it bounced off of mm -hmm. it we considered that line to be getting stronger um mm -hmm. and then you also said it's uh they're stronger, or you implied anyway, that they're stronger the longer that they've been held, that they've held, right? So if that trend, mm -hmm. if it's based on a longer time trend, kind of like a 50 year uh, flood line. So why does strength matter? Mm -hmm. So strength is really just about how much confidence you have in a thing happening. That's it. Um, the is now the time to get into why technical analysis works or no? No, I, I'm curious. I mean, if it relates to answering the question and for sure. Yeah. Like I, I, so, so why does strength matter? Strength why, gives me to like, okay. Well, okay so maybe, when maybe, I'm, maybe like a, I can change the question to make it not a why question. Um, what mm -hmm. should I do in response to a stronger line? Go. What should I do in response to a weaker line? Like how should I yes. make decisions based on strength of a line? Okay, so let's take this this line that we're looking at right now and let's yeah. move it into a one day. So like let's make this look like like things were looking mm -hmm. in July of whatever year this is through October. Okay. Okay. And what's interesting about this is as this pattern formed and stayed in this, let me find the annotation. Um it was a, it was what we would call a new pattern. So like it didn't fit any other patterns before, but now it's starting to create its own pattern. It has highs and lows. And you can see the first uh, low is right here. And then it kind of reinforces it again right here. And then these get down, but they don't go all the way down as, as much as you think. And you're like, that's cool. Then it gets down to here and it bounces and it bounces, mm -hmm. right? So you're like, okay, this is a strong support line. Also on the top, bouncing up you have right here here and kind of here but it, it, so it doesn't to, have to hit all the way doesn't have to hit no but and what if it like slightly it does, crosses and what if it like slightly crosses sometimes that happens and sometimes it it goes back into it but for the most part you'll see that it does or does not uh slightly cross mm -hmm. um what's important about if it slightly crosses is how long does it stay across that line think if you were like in kindergarten and you were like oh i'm jumping across this line right here are you going to get mad because we we're playing alligators or whatever and i jumped into your base yeah and you jumped right back no one cares but yeah. if you sit there forever then they're like 
you come across the line. No, we'll get we'll get into that later. Um, you officially broken the rules before you were just tiptoeing. So okay. that does kind of happen. Okay. Uh, but in general, what all this like weird stuff that I have written tells me is that um, these after two trends are pretty strong. Yeah, yeah. Like we I, we started right here three months ago. Uh-huh. Let's say between July and September, we realized that there's there's a real pattern here, right? Uh, and we and we've got all of October, September, and October off and nothing to do, and we just want to trade. So where's my draw line? So we are right here at halfway through September and bored, mm-hmm. right? But we've had this whole time to watch this pattern form, mm-hmm. and we've noticed that it stayed. When people have a top resistance line and a bottom support line, they call this a channel. So this is a downward Ah, channel. Everything is stayed in this downward channel. Then we have a really good uh, hunch that if Bitcoin drops down to here, it's probably going to stop dropping, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So we're right here. We can't even see it. We're thinking it's right here. But if it drops down to here, this isn't really about. This isn't really about. So sometimes I, I have this understanding of like prediction, right? Of like people mm-hmm. say like, oh, you you can, you know, I can predict the future. Well, you can tell people with, you know, that the, whether a thing is going to happen or not. Um, and mm-hmm. really what the way prediction works with like data science and stuff like that is you can say that something is statistically likely. Yep. Like one outcome is statistically more likely than another. That's really what mm-hmm. prediction is. The only thing prediction can mean sensibly. And so what you're yep. saying to me is that um, because of this channel, we can say when Bitcoin is going down towards that support line, it's most likely going to bounce mm-hmm. back up. But then if it, it doesn't, what happens? And that's what I mean by confidence, right? So let's I, say I, I have it's like predictability. Right? Yeah. yeah, I've got a, I've okay, got a but, lot okay, of confidence. Okay, so you were saying, I'll let you keep your, going your story. Okay, yeah, so, yeah. So, so like I've got a lot of confidence, confidence that if this gonna goes, it's going to go right here and bounce back up. I just okay. have a lot of confidence. I have a lot of... And, and, that's why whenever I talk to you about this, I'm like, it's probably going to do this. Mm-hmm. Most of the time I'm saying it's probably going to stay in this channel or mm-hmm. it's probably going to do whatever. Or when the markets were crashing mm-hmm. or like everybody was freaking out about COVID, fundamentally I knew that there's going to be an immediate, everybody sells every asset they have and everybody freak out. That includes crypto. And I said, it's in a channel right now. It's probably going to break down through that channel. Like just, I fundamentally know everybody in the world's freaking out. Gotcha. And now right? you're now you're and talking about fundamental March. analysis, right? Yep. Yep. And so, trend lines aside, uh-huh. fundamentally, I know, like, are like you could say fundamental analysis in stocks. We know they're going to drop because the whole world shut down business. Gotcha. So we know restaurant stocks is a bad thing to happen. That's fundamental knowledge you have. Right. Right. And so I knew fundamentally that it's probably going to break down. So, you know, there's, there's times when there's more pressure and fundamental that just completely breaks the trends. And then there's times where things stay in the trend patterns. Gotcha. Um, but how did you, we're, we're, so you knew it was going to break down based on fundamentals? Fundamentals, right. Gotcha. And the, the interesting thing is, is that, like they said, the, the stronger it is considered the more confidence that you get. The reason they don't just say like, Oh, it's a more confident line Mm -hmm. is because, and they use words like strong resistance line is because it's what happened and we'll that right now. But what I want to emphasize right here is that it's a good bet that I know that it's going to go here and bounce. And that right there is what seven, seven, eight. Is that right? Somewhere around there, I think is what it looks like. I'm trying to to look right here and see what it is. But um, I know that it's probably going to bounce. So if I wanted to trade while it stayed in this candle, this is a great time to buy. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because I know that it's only got between here mm-hmm. and here before it turns back around, probably. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, so you'd want to buy at that low line and then uh, sell yeah, at the at the watch resistance. It go to here. Why would I sell it right here? Because I think again, it's going to stay in this channel. So mm-hmm. I don't think it's actually going to go through. I think the channel is going to hold. So I want to sell it right there, so that it can go back down. And what can I do again? Buy again. Buy yeah. it. And then back up and sell it. And this is what everybody calls riding the waves. Buy the dip. Sell at a high. 
all those things you've heard your crypto nerdy financial nerdy friends say that's what they're talking about totally they're riding okay. these ways right okay now that's all working off the assumption that it continues to do this right and the longer it stays in a pattern the more likely in theory it is to continue to do that uh-huh right but what happens when it doesn't and that's, that's exactly the really what I want to know <laughs> yeah that's that's a million the dollar question part. So another reason they call it that is because the more times it bounces off, again, the stronger or not strong. Dude, it was in that pattern for is. a long time. It's a long line. It was. This was. I, I probably was buying and selling something <laughs> during this pattern. So there's times when Jess has asked me about this, and he's like, "How's it doing?" And I'll say it's chaotic, or I'll say it's actually really calm and predictable. Um, there's that's a lot of the reasons why. Right when COVID hit. I told Jess, I was like, that, like, there's not a more chaotic moment than right now. Because right. I knew that the fundamental analysis was going to not care at all what the technical analysis had to say. Mm-hmm. Right? People were freaking out. Mm-hmm. So it was going to do one thing or another, but it was probably going to break some trends. And the reason why it was really chaotic is because during that crash, we're seeing governments fall and people in Bitcoin see it as a quote unquote safe hold currency, mm-hmm. which we can go down that path or not if you want to. But um, that they're basically, you know, when stock markets crashed, everybody said buy gold, buy gold, because the dollar is going to go to nothing and hyperinflation is going to hit. Well, the same fundamentals follow with Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. If you want your money to stay valuable, buy Bitcoin. Gotcha. And so people didn't know, is that going to happen or is everybody going to freak out and sell everything? So they didn't know if Bitcoin was going to just deflate to nothing which it's never really going to do, or if people are going to start freaking out and buying it. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And so I was like, it's not more chaotic than this. Like throw all the, throw all my lines and my charts out the window because mm-hmm. this fundamental analysis is going to override it. Mm-hmm. Um, but of course that black Thursday is what they call it. And all of the people who traded on crypto love that because they're like, yes, that's when I bought my $3,000 Bitcoin because <laughs> they all bought it at four. I think, uh, you, you and I were chatting all day on that day. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, so so fundamental analysis just, at the end of the day, fundamental could mean like, oh, um, a meteor hit the planet and wiped out ninety percent of the computers. It's a pretty good fi- fundamental indicator that Bitcoin's going to be in trouble, right? Right, as as is the rest of the world. Fundamental is always going to outweigh technical, mm-hmm. and I think it's a combination of the two that makes smart trading. Um, but fundamentals is always going to outweigh it because, mm-hmm. you know, well, so, talk, the so back to technical for a second, talk about how this yep. broke out of this channel. So you've given us this channel. Okay. What happened? So th- this is where this gets fun. So, um, let me see how to, by the way, we're that. looking at the beginning of 2020, which is right when I bought that blue candle right there in the middle. This one, is this one, right? Or this, this, this one right there in the middle is, is when one? I bought, I bought on January 1st. <laughs> Uh, so a complete a random buy. buy. Complete random buy. Buy yeah. on January first. Um, Let's zoom it back in. This is gonna be fun. So, so yeah. How did it break that, out of this technical channel? So, so, so what happened? And I don't remember what it was right here that broke it out. Mm-hmm. But if you'll notice, and let's zoom in even more. Let's get down to like the four-hour time okay. frame. If you see this channel that's going on right here, and this one wasn't even as volatile as a lot of them that mm-hmm. happened. You see that it somewhere about right here, probably some big institutional funds or somebody said, okay, it's time to punch through. Like we're, we're done. We're buying and we're buying a lot. Right. And, and so they started buying and it caused a bit of some craze and it sat here and bought and people held it for hours. It didn't just jump back through. Mm-hmm. Um, that does happen a lot. In fact, if I were to draw this line more accurately, I would try to make points like uh, I try to make points like, yeah, so this is one of my big questions. Do you make your points from the top of candles or not? I do. I generally do. So um, let me zoom this back out and try yeah, to make is, some more this accurate points. This is really good because I was trying to, I was making some lines earlier today for like my first time ever. And I was like, wait, mm-hmm. do I draw them to the inside <laughs> line of the candle, like the, the bulk bulky part of the candle? Or do I draw them to the top tip of the candle? Or does it matter? Or 
I'm probably I'm probably showing you right now sloppy habits if we're being honest. But like the thing about me is that I I've done this long enough to realize that that there are here we go there that like, I know what candle, it means. Yep. <laughs> then so I'm like, do should... I draw along here or do I draw along here? Is what one of the questions yes. that I had. That's a great question. You should draw ninety five percent of the time. You should draw. So just assume right now when uh -huh. beginning, you should draw here. Okay, great. Okay, I'll try to do that for the most part. But you were just talking you'll about- You'll learn. Yeah. Yeah, you'll learn over time why some people draw like that and why you'll see me break out of the lines and ignore it. Mm -hmm. um, some, mm -hmm. that little analogy I gave earlier about how long you it can stay. cross for a second, yeah. Yep, and you'll see that certain places like- uh, Let's see if I can get back away from that into the annotations. If I were to line these up better, I would make them touch on lines. And what I would try to do mm -hmm. is I would try to make them touch as many lines as possible. Um, so right. like I would draw this and let it touch that one and see if there's a couple of other lines over here. I didn't even get this to the top point. Like what's really interesting is if you built this based on these lines mm -hmm. right here, right? Mm -hmm. There's a line and it's touching and there's a line and you held it, right? Mm -hmm. Then it broke that line over here, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And see what happened when it broke that line? It shot up. Yeah. It shot up because there was a... This is, yeah. So this talk is, about that. Like you, you were saying, we talked about strength and I, I, I asked mm -hmm. the question and we didn't really answer it yet, which is like, what should I do? when it breaks a strong line? Like, what should I expect to happen? Mm -hmm. How should I respond to it? Like, there's a really strong line in place and it's approaching that line. Yep. So the first thing you should expect is we're going to go from a, a more certain pattern to less certainty. Okay. And I say that first. A lot of people would tell you right away, oh, the stronger it is when it breaks too, expect it to go straight up. And it does a lot of times. You see this pressure. And you'll see that it broke the line and it and in that day mm -hmm. it really launched up. But it also came back down. Yeah. Pretty quickly. Right? Pretty quickly. And 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 it didn't stay up necessarily. Right. So it went back down into that channel pretty quick. It did. And what's funny is, and this is why I told you this too. Remember when I said, uh, you remember the resistance line? Yeah. I said once it crosses that, it becomes what? A support line. A support line. So that was something you said that me? I did not understand. So almost immediately oh, after that. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm still struggling with their controls. A little, there you go. Uh, almost immediately after that, you see it kind of forming like a line right there. I'm trying to hmm. trace the right kind of line. If you hold down. So uh, that was previously. Option. If you hold down option, it will not snap. And then you can draw oh, it freely. That? Yeah. As you're dragging and you hold oh, down option. Yeah. That way you can drag it wherever you want. Yep. Snap so is nice when you want it to a snap. a line here that follows all these, right? For the most yeah. part, There's, it barely dips over a few spots, but it's mostly mm -hmm. touching that. Yeah. But then if you notice right here, it went through and it pounded through. And then it, almost immediately pressure in the other direction started pushing it back down. Right. Interesting. And, yeah. then, and the line now. And then as formed, soon as it, as soon as it uh, crossed back down past that support line, like right. Bam. It went broke it, it again. Dropped. Yeah. So this right mm -hmm. here was a pretty volatile down. Yeah. Yes. Um, like, Absolutely. Look at, especially look at the height of that it, candle. It, the height of that. Especially because it, it, for the most part, at that point. Being your support line, right? Uh huh. But that was no longer the case, was it? Mm hmm. Like you no longer had three, four, five months, however long it was before that over oh, here. Oh, because it was a, a, weak, a fairly line. weak support line. Got it. That's like yep. a month. Now long. you had this to work off of, which, by the way, formed out of the chaotic thing of this guy, right? <laughs> which is kind of chaotic, and people expect this stuff to go like this when the trend is broken. Uh huh. And it wasn't doing that, so. It was very chaotic, right? New support mm -hmm. line. You don't know how long the highs are. It's supposed to be pushing up. For some reason, it's not. Uh, and then it gets to right here and breaks down. Yep. This was a very confusing time. This is not a time I would expect, I would tell people to like get crazy. 
I would say trade. settle down and let it fall into some patterns again. Got it. Um, but it doesn't always happen like that. And the mm -hmm. expectation is that it does something like this. A lot of times when it's in a pattern, if mm -hmm. it breaks up, it's going to form a new pattern and that new pattern's probably going to go up. If it breaks down, it's going to form a new pattern and that pattern's probably going to go down. Okay. And that's, so, so breaking resistances usually goes up. Breaking supports usually goes down. Usually goes down. Makes sense. The I mean, that's where the pressure remember, is. The direction is going. Yeah. The main thing to remember is that we're in a new pattern and there's less predictability. Got it. And then do you look back like in history to try and find what the next support and res or yes. and or resistance yes. line is all the time okay so all then the you're, then you're fact, looking at a different time frame yep and, and it's like i'm back to square one drawing lines again all new circles and dots and well not circles okay but triangles and boxes like i've got all new stuff that i'm doing technical analysis on a lot of all people right. don't so yeah, another ahead. question is uh, candles, candle width. We're looking at one day right now and you're drawing, but like there's all these different candle sizes. Um, mm -hmm. Where do you typically spend your time or where is the best place to draw lines? I know that there's probably not a best place, but like, right. What it, like, yeah. So when I first started trading, I spent like almost all my time at like five minutes, <laughs> which is fun. Let's go down here to five minutes okay. and like one minute because you can literally see because like a lot of other people, I was looking at this and thinking, this thing is moving incredibly slow. I'm bored, right? <laughs> like, like, what, what, I, don't I get a new candle so, every minute. Yeah, <laughs> this is so great. Minute, like I can literally see it moving. Like here it is, it's moving. It's going up and down. And, yep. and watching this when it's, when it's very volatile, it's a lot of fun. But then I started realizing like, I'm so zoomed in on this that mm -hmm. I'm not, following the longer patterns that are that are happening so right. nowadays the most zoomed in i'll get on is probably 15 uh because i will look at it and say okay what's it done in the last 24 hours mm -hmm. but i don't want to know what it's done in the last hour it's just too zoomed of a lens it doesn't give me the context that i need okay. most of the time since i get on i check prices and trends anywhere between 0.2 times a day and two times a day okay there are times I mean, when i do it once a week so once a and week there are times, and twice a day something like and that. there are times when i go twice a day right okay. uh and so so like because most of my trades i'm trading longer versus short do you want to give that an explanation what a long trade is or a short or uh wait we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute yeah okay uh i'm trading long which means, and we'll talk about the other part in a minute. It means basically I'm not trying to buy a trade right now and sell it tomorrow. Got it. Okay. Most things I'm doing, I'm trying to buy now and I'm, and I'm trying to sell like over a year from now. Oh, wow. Over a year. Yeah. So that's, you're interested, you're interested in very long-term trades then. Very long trades. Okay. Uh, with that said, I will, if it bounces all the way up to like 15 K mm -hmm. right now, you better believe I'm going to sell it. In fact, that's right. right. So you'll sell early. But you're early. you're in general you're looking for a longer. Uh, I'm looking for a longer term sort of thing. Interesting. So are you so drawing I, lines around that too? Like yes. So that's why most of the time, I the lines that I'm looking at right now every single day, I'm looking uh -huh. at probably the one days, or even the one weeks. So let's start with the one weeks. So the one weeks is rewinding back years, right? Mm -hmm. uh, one weeks. If you look at this one week right here. Mm -hmm. uh this goes back to um 2017 right mm -hmm. this is a very long thing this mm -hmm. was so i i draw lines like this mm -hmm. because what i care about mostly is this peak right here mm -hmm. and this peak right here mm -hmm. right and i know that it kind of bounced after that peak and as you see right here it came up recently i guess this is this year and yeah, guess what in, uh, it March, followed the same pattern yeah it's like february now what's interesting is it's kind of trying to do that again isn't it but yeah. let's go line up this pattern and make sure that it's actually on that top line because okay. it's not quite you said option let me see yep. there we go yep all right so i'm gonna put it about right there close to the top because that okay. was a whole week over here it likely stayed up there for a little while it wasn't yeah you know 
And now as we rewind, now let's uh, go back gotcha. to one day. Let's go to there, and we'll see how close I am on the line. Yeah, pretty close. Close enough. Okay. Close enough. Like yeah, that's, okay. That's, gotcha. that's, that's, uh, and so now we have that top line. That top line is, there's a lot of confidence. It's what I, I would call pretty darn strong top line. The bottom line that I generally follow with this goes way back Holy to here. Smoke. And Jess, you were looking at one. Yeah, this is yeah. 2000. We're, we're there yeah. before 2017. What happened in April of 2017? There's that one day where it like... It just plummeted. There's a couple of exchanges that that happened. I, you know, when something, when a commodity, uh -huh. and this is where I compare Bitcoin to a commodity, when a commodity is new, uh -huh. And there's not a lot of volume of it. Crazy things like this happen. Got it. The more volume of a thing that happens over time, less crazy things happen. Sure. Okay. So you kind of ignore that blip because yeah. I was wondering what I should do with that. I saw that and I was like, what the heck? No. Do I count that I, I ignore as breaking that. the... That, okay. was probably, uh, that was probably one of two things. That was probably either some exchanges going down and everybody freaking out and selling everything and then buying everything. Or that was maybe, uh, and I don't even know what that one was, to be honest. That was maybe, um, there's just so little volume, comparatively speaking, that like mm -hmm. people, you know, it's easier to make a, a big splash in a small pond, right? Got it. So if you, if you scroll your scroll bar, yeah, exactly. You'll shrink yeah. the candle size and then you can. Let's see if I can now get this. Let's do it to three days and see if I can get my reinforced pattern bounces so you can see it right here it's starting to already form here on this pattern so this is like four four months before those two uh -huh. and then it kind of got close to it again here mm -hmm. and then it started to hold and as you can see right here a lot of people actually draw it back to yeah to about right here so so what's interesting is it's moving from this point to this point mm -hmm. and actually if you pull this back harder you'll mm -hmm. see it go all the way to a top point that it broke below and served as an opposite line like we were talking about earlier. Remember mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and so you want to look through historically and see what the longest kind of trend was. And from right here to right here is, is a good long trend. Mm -hmm. um, and so people then took that, backtraced it as well, and saw how long the line actually accurately follows this way. Mm -hmm. so, so a lot of people will trace this one and do that and trace it back there too. Um, mm -hmm. Where you put your confidence line is only as good as your confidence in that line, mm -hmm. right? So it so for me personally, ah, come on, delete. Yeah, there you right are. click. Yep. Um, my confidence is in this. What I use as my confidence in my bottom line is a line that connects from about right here to about right here. Where does that put this? Let's zoom. Fast forward. We are now close to like five k. Let's. See. This is, it's a little harder because the charts, because I have the screen so blown up right now. Yeah, sure. You could probably bounce um, down one if you want, by the way. Let's do that. It's going to help a lot. There, there go. we go. So I'm still going between those two lines right there. I guess I'm not really, am I? Uh, let's shrink this down more. I think this is actually closer to what I used. The problem is I had it drawn on my computer and then I just deleted it as we saw. <laughs> and I was like, oh, why did you do that? That was, uh, I have it on some other charts. If I have to, I can go back and grab those. But for the most part, it's probably going to follow those and then it's going to go to about right here. Now let's zoom back and see how it looks. I'm still a little off. Let's do this one. Okay. This is what most people are like. It's magic. I don't get it. What is he doing right now? Um, if we move this right here back to mm -hmm. the one day, you'll start seeing that it is actually following some trends. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's bouncing here. It's doing the thing that I was talking about where it steps over the line and says, hey, I'm messing with you. And then it starts to go up. And, and all of this area right here mm -hmm. is what I would mostly consider height. Like this line right here, mm -hmm. if you fall, if you backtrace it even further, it, it stays pretty shaped like this for like eight years, like a long time. 
like Bitcoin grew slowly and had a nice long solid line. Mm-hmm. It sure it dips through here, crazy things happen, but for the most part, it still touched that point over and over. By this time, this was almost all hype. And mm-hmm. we all know that when this thing hit 19,000, or if you don't know, let me tell you real quick. It was not worth $19,000 at that time. <laughs> that was yeah. an inflated, this is called a bubble. We all know that things happen like this. Um, and and it, it certainly wasn't. But um, if you, that's kind of closer to what I use for my bottom line. Let's, let me zoom back out and get it shaped up right. So now it's bouncing off those as well, which is good. Now let's move it all the way to over here. And actually, I'll move it back a little bit just to mm-hmm. account for this thing right here, right? For that drop, for our new drop that we just... Isn't that the one that we just had? Yeah. That one might not be. Yeah, it is. Uh, it? That's the one. That's the, the COVID drop. Yeah. Black Thursday. That's what some people call it. I think that's funny. Anyways. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So now, so now we're bouncing off of that. Mm-hmm. We're still within this, right? No crosses. Yeah. It's a pretty, it's a pretty decent solid line. Yeah. Okay. Now I use those two lines and what I was using, I was using that for my long-term line. Uh-huh. And then I was watching the short-term trends right here before black Thursday. I was looking at something like, uh, no, I, I see. I was probably, I don't know. I wasn't going quite that deep. I was going like this again, breaking my own rules, kind of skipping through that one line. Uh-huh. Right. And then when it got down to here, that's when I told you, like, it's either going to get real crazy and go down, or it's going to take the support line that we had already previously established Mm -hmm. and bounce back somewhere in, uh, where's my annotation tools? Somewhere it's probably, and and back again then I said probably, Mm because we don't know, right? Like every, this is all prediction mechanisms. It's probably going to bounce back somewhere in here. Wow. And, yeah. and that's where I wanted to buy because I knew if it broke below this, that it's probably going to go for a wild ride until it hits its next support. Mm-hmm. And that was right here. And by the way, I told Jess then, I said, if it breaks below this, I, I don't know. I don't know. Chaos. Like, it's not going to die. Bitcoin's right. not going to die. <laughs> like, it, like that's, right. that gets into the technology thing. We'll say that for mm-hmm. maybe another time. But uh, there's a lot of technological reasons why it won't die. Sure. Uh, but it could surely go way, way down. Mm-hmm. But because I know it won't die, and because I have the confidence that it won't die and that it'll return state up here, and like it's always done over time, mm-hmm. somewhere, eventually, if it dropped down to like 2000 right here, I told Jess that I was going to sell the house, probably both <laughs> my kids, I was going to sell the wife, pets got to go, like everything's going because I got to buy more Bitcoin. Um, <laughs> I'll buy them all back when I sell it all right here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, but like, that's just the kind of confidence I had in it. But mm-hmm. you know, the expectation was that, and let's see if we can clear this, uh, clear all drawings that, uh, this was going to be crazy if it mm-hmm. went into this, but it was also expected that it wasn't going to go into this mm-hmm. and sure. True to technical analysis, it bounced here and it started going back up. Mm-hmm. Right. But we had, um, we had some downward trends specifically right here that had been broken. Mm-hmm. Right. And then, and then by that time it was like, okay, we kind of got to redraw this a little bit. And um, I think the latest one I have zoomed into about one day. So like now we're moving into much more current stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, I got two more, just so you know, bro, I got two more yeah. topics I want to talk about. So okay. um, I want to talk about the happening. What the heck is that? Uh, and I what mean... you what you expect to happen around the happening? And actually, maybe mm-hmm. before we talk about that, it might be useful just for you to kind of take us into a more zoomed in view um, and try mm-hmm. to give. Let's try to guess on the live stream what's going to yeah. happen in the next forty eight hours. Since we're, I mean, why not? Right? Like we're using technical yeah. analysis. <laughs> exactly. Um, why not make a bet and then uh, and see if we're right. So let's let's just, do the forty eight hour thing first, and then if we have time, uh, this I don't is know my lack of uh, yeah, this is where lack of preparation really messed me up because uh, I've deleted all my lines that I've been using for like four months. So and I just did it again. What a silly person! Okay, 
Yeah, I was um, I was messing with this earlier, and I had the same problem of like, man, I wish I could save a set of lines or something. It seems so like that I would probably, be something that CryptoWatch would let you do. Yeah, and and there's more advanced features that do, I believe. I have not used them yet, um, but they'll let you save. Like you do these these lines and then save these lines. But this is the the free account that we're using. By the uh, way, everyone, this is a free account that we're using. So like you can get started on CryptoWatch. For, with a free account and, and draw basic lines. The reason we're still using it is because there's not really a lot of tooling out there for doing what we're doing right now, mm-hmm. as Jess has experienced. Um, the, uh, what I should have done is done this on a different exchange, right? A lot of these exchanges look the sim- it looks similar, but you can chart on each one individually. Yep. So like if I took came over here and switched to I did actually, I, I do. that's actually what I did earlier. I is can I did. do this. Let's yeah. go look at my Kraken. I don't I think I did do this correctly. I was smart. Um <laughs> <laughs> I where is uh, I made a good choice. Uh Bitcoin, let's go look at Bitcoin uh Kraken. Kraken is the one that I use most of the time. Hey, our job. Lines. Hey. Nice. Okay, great. Lines and dots and drawings and things. Okay, so as you can see, again, we have big triangles, big wedge, right? Hey. Let's And you got big wedges uh, in the sky too. Look at that. Yeah, I, I think I couldn't figure out how to like uh delete those without making them go away. So I just moved them up to the top. <laughs> Inch cool. them higher and higher. All right. Like so let's Anyways. let's uh let's take a moment and drill in and predict the future. All right, so let's predict the future, shall we? So you can see that we have the big one that I always, always check this. I always keep my big wedge in context. Mm -hmm. But I've done more drawing since, haven't I? Yeah. All these little squiggles right here. And that is me working in smaller time frames. Uh, I usually don't delete old things because they're interesting to look at again whenever I look at patterns that did or didn't break. Mm -hmm. Um, So let's zoom into these. So right here, this is a relatively long channel actually longer than I was expecting that I had done from that bottom right there. So right here, remember again, support line that was broken turned into a resistance Mm -hmm. and kind of reinforced itself Mm -hmm. over and over on those. I hate it when it does that. There we go. Kind of reinforced itself over and over. Right. Mm -hmm. But then something happened up here, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Uh, Which is that we had these channels and it broke down. And I could have told you that for a long time because it was getting too hot, in my opinion, what do you fundamentally. Mean too hot. So when I say too hot, I mean that it's probably being overbought. There's probably hype. People are getting excited about it. Um, Just because the, the re- long upward pressure. The long upward pressure that we had, mm-hmm. but I also this is where it's important to have both fundamental and um, uh, analytical knowledge because. We know that that this line probably won't stay forever, right? We know that. Like this channel is not going to stay forever. So when's it going to break? Well, you know, as as more strength comes, it continues to get stronger, meaning that the break is going to be more volatile when it does happen. But fundamentally, there was enough in our markets going on back in February. So I was like, this is not, I knew fundamentally that it's not going to be that high. My pricing that I have, my true line, which is not on this one, mm-hmm. uh, uh, does is a moving average, which is another technical analysis tool that we won't really get into on this one. But basically, mm-hmm. it's forming a line that looks something like, ooh, perfect, <laughs> something like this. Yeah, there we go. And this is what I've called, told Jess over and over. I've called my true value line. Um, because I think that, that I personally have set for my own understanding and measures a line of how much I think Bitcoin is worth at the time. Mm-hmm. So over here, I was like, yeah, Bitcoin's probably worth like, I think I was actually closer to 6000 to 6, But I was mm-hmm. like, I think it's true value is about 6000 mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, how much is it priced in exchanges right now? 10000 so fundamentally, I was like, there's a huge gap <laughs> between what I fundamentally think it should be priced and where it's Got currently it. priced. 
Okay. So gotcha. I know there's t technical analysis that says it's going to keep going up. I know there are people that are excited about it. There have been bubbles that have formed before, but I don't think now is the time. Got it. And so I believe there's going to be enough downward pressure to where inevitably, yes, there was. And it broke down. And then over here again, this is when we started getting closer to COVID. And, I, and while a lot of the world was watching our markets, mm -hmm. the thing about crypto is you have to realize that crypto, you can't just watch the U.S. markets in crypto. It's global. Mm -hmm. It's always been global. So if, mm -hmm. if like, a, you know, if, if something goes off in Japan and, and just like when the nuclear meltdown happened or whatever, right, mm -hmm. and markets collapsed in Japan, and the U.S. markets kind of felt it. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of, right? It's, it doesn't work like that with Bitcoin. If something, if like markets are collapsing or something big event happens somewhere, it's mm -hmm. affecting markets everywhere. So at this time, um, guess what was happening in China? Oh, that was COVID taking off. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So, yeah. so I was like, I was sitting here going, and then like miners, miners were getting like shut down. The yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Computers are being shut down. And I'm like, this can't keep going up. It's got to go down. And so then it hit this trend. And I said, ah, it's a downward trend. But guys, things are still getting more serious. I still think it's going to go down. And sure enough, it did. Jess and I probably texted all day this day. Because yeah. <laughs> he was like, yeah. okay, what's going to happen well, now you had, it's going down? You had signaled to me somewhere in here that I should be watching for it to break below this basically. Um, yes. and so I set up, I yep. set up buys all the way down, um, uh, as it, as it dropped. And that was, and that was under your guidance too. You were like, it's probably going to drop to here. It's yep. probably not going to get below this. So like space your buys out between here and here, you know, roughly. Um, yep. and that, so that was really helpful. Uh, and then as it came back up, I just, I just set every one of my buys that I made here, uh, to sell at a 10% gain. So every time I made a buy, yep. I set a sell at like 10% above it. Um, so I was playing very, very conservatively. Um, and absolutely. Uh, yeah, it worked out. Okay. But, but the, it's, yeah. And, and the reason that I was, the reason that I was able to predict these things, it's not magic. It's that I was mixing two things, which is fundamental and technical analysis. I fundamentally knew that the world is freaking out right here. Right. And that we're we're too high for my true value line, so mm -hmm. I fundamentally knew that we were probably going to come down. Once we started to come down, we dropped even below my true value line, and I knew fundamentally, okay, it's not, it's not a four thousand dollar asset. Mm -hmm. Like it's sitting here, but it's not a four thousand dollar asset. And, and plus so it I knew fundamentally that, that it's on that that long support mm -hmm. line as well, right? Yep. So I knew as soon as it went below about right here, I knew it was time to start watching it to see where the bottom is going to be. Right. Mm -hmm. Because that's where at this time point in time, I wanted to buy. Right. You wanted yep. to buy. Right. I'm not the only one. There are, okay. there so are that a was... lot of people on crypto Twitter that bought here. So that's Black Thursday. Take us to today. Kind of like mm -hmm. bring it. Zoom us in. Let's, to... let's make a prediction. Yeah, let's yep. make a prediction. Uh, all right. So the, the other fun thing about this is that I told Jess, Jess asked me this earlier today. He said, you want to do this tonight? I said, sure. Why not? I, I love getting on videos and talking. We both love talking. Um, and so I looked at some stuff earlier today. And then when I told him that, I said, I'm not going to chart, do any chart. I didn't tell him this. I said, I'm not going to do any charting until we get on tonight. I'm literally not going to look at the prices. So I'm going to update down to the 15 minute and let's see where we are because I don't know, because I have not checked what price action has happened in the last 12 hours. Ah. Sometimes you get lost in the charts. There we go. Okay, cool. So earlier today, I drew this, and then I told Jess that if it breaks, because it's been going for about a day, that it could get interesting here. Mm -hmm. And it did get a little interesting. And it has broken, and it's held up, and it's kind of, it hasn't gone up as much as I would expect. So right now, the first thing is I got off about right here, about at this guy. Okay. So about when I mean, got off earlier you, today. You didn't, haven't checked since here, I can basically. look at it. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, got basically. It. So everything on buying that line is new to me right now. Okay. Now, when I got on today, I was probably, eh, where's the line tool? Give me the line tool. I was expecting to see something that, 
Why does it keep doing that? That looked about like this. Me, I was expecting some upward action, basically. Uh -huh. Wasn't expecting that. Uh, why was I expecting upward action? Fundamental mm -hmm. analysis. It's now moved out of its pattern, mm -hmm. so chaos ensues. Fundamental reigns king it, when it's when it does that, and so fundamentally, I think that the more the guy. <laughs> The more we print stimulus packages, and you can go Google all this, there's a lot of people that believe this as well, uh, the stronger the Bitcoin is going to get into, it's going to become. Okay. For a lot so of So you were basing, That's once it broke this analysis. line here, you're saying, okay, now it's switching from a, a, a technically dominant pattern to a fundamentally mm -hmm. dominant pattern, or it's going to be influenced by the fundamentals. Yep. And so your belief about yeah. the basically your belief about uh, stimulus patterns driving the the cost of Bitcoin up wasn't didn't prove to be true at least not radically so in this case because it clearly didn't go up too no, much. Not, yeah. Um, are uh, we back into a different channel now? Like, time frame. are we back into a different that's channel what, now? So Should like, we be that's what I would, that? What that's what I'm gonna put us in now, and I might even get a little crazy because why not? Mm -hmm. And I'll go even shorter in and not to the 15 minute. I know I said 15 minute, but I do generally stay in 15 minutes because I do not generally predict this short of time frames. But we do have a channel. So like you can see one forming right here. Now, if, if I were to be like a day trader or something like that, I would be probably looking at these things. So So you can see right here, there was another, I like to connect it back to these. That mm. somebody who trades a lot more will tell you why people do that. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't tell you why I do that. That's that's a little wizardry to so me. So you but cross back I over. I usually find an anchor point of how. Right. You want to go I'll back, back across. over to see what. You got it. Right. Instead of just holding these right here, mm -hmm. like I could, right? I, I want to actually connect it to a high point previous to this pattern. Okay. Got it. That makes sense. I need to go Google why I do that. I've been doing that for so long. I can't even tell you why I do that. Um, I'm sure you can go on crypto Twitter and or any trader Twitter and the financial people will tell you that. Um, I can tell you why is I would it, use React. So a couple questions. Of, couple questions. So is it does right. it matter yeah. that that it's kind of a broadening channel? Does that does that matter? Do all channels have to like head into each Great other? Great question. No. No, and channels okay. often won't. I mean, the only thing that makes it a wedge versus a channel is does it head into itself? Oh, okay. So wedges do this, channels do this. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't get mm -hmm. that. I didn't catch and, that. And all okay, wedge, gotcha. we, most of the time channels are pretty close to parallel, but wedges uh, gotcha. in general indicate that there is an ending point to that channel. Got it. Right? Okay. It runs into each other. It's going to have to break Got up it. or it's going to have to break down somewhere. And a lot of times, right after pattern breaks, you'll have you'll have um, you'll have wedges fall. So, like if we went all the way into the one minute, let's say we were getting real crazy. Um, we back over here, and I'll draw these charts. Right mm -hmm. after it broke north, we're like, hey, there's a lot of volatility going on. We have a new point right here, and we have this point right here. Mm -hmm. So we can say that those two are forming like that, and then we also have a high here. And a low right there. Let's say, let's say that we were we were annotate. Where's my annotation? In time, we were right here. Mm -hmm. So we had we we're like okay cool we got our wedge this is great like we know what we're doing we got our wedge mm -hmm. and um, what's going to inevitably happen is before we saw all this stuff, mm -hmm. it's going to run into a point. I need to go back to annotation. I have to keep flipping back and forth. Uh, it's it's going to run to a point where here, where it's got to go up or down, right? Got it. And got this is a, a relatively small time frame. Right. This is a relatively small time frame, so it's not as big of a deal. Mm -hmm. um, it, but it's going to cross one. And guess what happens when it cross? See? Back to the same stuff. It's going to cross. It's going to go one direction. The stronger the line. But I mean, by over here, it was completely out of patterns. And it didn't matter anymore that it had gone up here. Right. Other than the fact that it was forming a new channel. Um, 
So let's delete these. Okay. I have not used annotations as much as I want. One thing to think about is what happens when this triangle. <laughs> yeah. You know, this yeah. is what I think about every night. What happens on this triangle? Because if nothing has changed by 2021 and we're mm -hmm. still in this pattern and we get into like July of 2021, mm -hmm. I expect a lot of volatility one way or another. In fact, if it broke here, I would be really darn confident that we might hit another parabolic movement like we hit in 2017. Right. Gotcha. Like so get this ready is, this for is the where you were stupid telling me, high thing. Yeah, you were telling me like at like 10.5 on the date of the halving, if it breaks 10 five, things are going to go, go nuts. Mm. Um, because that's that top Things line. are going to go nuts. Um, and with, you know, May 20th is the date of the happening. So if it crosses that, yep. that top and suspension. There... Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's so get we're back to go the prediction. Back in again. Yep. yep. Let's make a prediction. So I'm back in on the five minute. I'm breaking my rules. I usually don't get this, this short anymore, but. My prediction is that, is it May 1? Are we in May 1? Tomorrow. No, we're not. We have two more hours, right? Yep. Two and a half. Well, you do. Yeah, I have so three more minutes. And this is the marker. Cause it's third, yeah. Uh, let's say by, uh, we want something interesting, though. We don't just want channel. Channel, uh -huh. channel, channel. Let's say, let me zoom out a little bit more. We don't want this to be juicy, because I, I especially want us to laugh really hard when I'm wrong. Yeah, <laughs> that's the best thing to do. Yep. The other thing about trading is to know that, like, you're you're betting predictions. You want to make more right guesses than wrong guesses. But guess right. what? You're going to make a lot of wrong guesses, and that's just the nature of it. Yep. Uh, Jess and I build products like that, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> we make right guesses. We make wrong guesses. So what about um, this channel here? Which one? Can you see mine? Uh, that is interesting. So. Yeah. So if I got rid of what I'm focused on, I like that. Let's, let's go with that. If I got rid of what I'm focused on, then let's make, let's make a wedge. There's a wedge, baby. Right? Yeah. There you go. From There's this, a wedge. Like ignore this, this guy and look at this top channel. Yeah. The two and we've got, got a wedge. Pink. And in fact, if we take this one, like if we keep extending Ooh, yeah, it and yeah. making it further I'll and clear further. Mine real quick. Yeah, and let's see what kind of wedge this can form. Yeah, that's a really because strong again, like top, the, you want to resistance line. Get your wider one. Yep, I think that perhaps maybe right here we'll hit it. No, yeah, maybe right yeah. here. Yeah, no, I think it will. Um, bring... Almost. We might already be. We I think we're already breaking that trend. I think we might have to use this. I think a lot of our other trends have broken it which is fine. Yeah. But that just means that we have less confidence in what we're doing. Right. And these are short. Just these are, that these are several hour long. long. <laughs> well, there's several hour long uh, channels too, or like a wedge. Yes. It's a pretty small little wedge. It's a very small little wedge. It's like a three hour wedge. Mm -hmm. This is, this is uh, not, not usually the time frame that I trade on, but I love to get my hands dirty with it. So let's do it. So we're all the way down to the one minute, which is something I don't think I've looked at it year in years. Let's do it to three minutes because that sounds fun. I haven't used a three minute before. Um, okay, so there's gonna this this wedge, all, although it's not a super strong wedge, right? It's only three hours old. Yeah, uh, tells us that there's that this thing's gonna break up or down somewhere. Right. It's not. It's likely not going to stay where's my annotation in here it's likely not going to stay yes exactly you got it it's so not going to stay flat it's we may have had some down. flatness but it, we, we're going this way or we're going this way interesting now in this wedge pattern the bet is really you you have to decide when, you know which way you want to place a bet on things right now Mm -hmm. Um, I am generally bullish mm -hmm. right now on things because I believe there's a lot of people right now that are literally Googling Bitcoin 
In fact, we should we should do trend analysis on the Google trends mm -hmm. because they're hearing their crazy crypto friend talk about the happening and they're mm -hmm. going, what the heck is that, right? It's like there's, it's, it's generating some hype. Mm -hmm. My thoughts are that if it's going to break one way or another, it's going to break up. Another thing that you'll often see, so mm -hmm. I'm going to bet up. I'm going to bet that by May, by two o'clock in the morning, because mm -hmm. I've also got this support line going right mm -hmm. here that's going to continue. If it's bets up, then I oh, think that okay. it's going to so stay above Okay, so if it's a wedge, does it, does it generally follow the support line? Like, or does it generally follow the so line the that it doesn't thing, right? break? Or does it go chaotic? If it, if it, even in the wedge, if it broke the resistance line, yep. it didn't break the support line, did it? Ah, no, it didn't. So, so it's going to keep that support line. I would guess would be, it would. Would be the right. In general, that's the theory, though. If it breaks out of a wedge, it, it that's the one of the lines remains. Yep. The other line disappears. Remains right. The probability is that it'll stay above that. If it goes right. down, then the probability is. The technical yeah. analysis is, that you see right here tells us that if it breaks down, it's going to mm -hmm. stay down. If it breaks up, it's going to stay up. That's all the technical analysis tells us. The rest is for us to add more technical analysis on it to have theories about what it actually will do during all of those moments. Yeah. But I would say right now that I'm 60%. So let's, let's, pick, let's pick a price. 65% uh... confident up. Right. But I don't think it'll explode up if it goes up right now. All right. So, so where, do you, where do you think it's going to be? Because I don't think it'll explode. Pick a, pick a price and a, a time. Annotation out. Yeah. Okay. I think that no, I can't chart and annotate at the same time. Okay. I think that um, that two o'clock is not, it's too boring. Yeah. Go further. It's crazy. Exactly. Yeah. This three minute stuff is garbage. Give me the five minute. All right. So I like this support line still because this support line is going back to noon a whopping <laughs> noon. almost <laughs> one o'clock in the afternoon i mean it goes back you know 10 hours <laughs> Woo! five minute candles I, I will baby. Say this. the the this thing right here is like three days old right this downward trend yeah it is. and it broke up on that channel and yep. and i i'm gonna just with my instinct say that the momentum of the upward break is going to continue so i'm okay. bullish so if it breaks up i've still got a confident line so I will go as far out as, okay, I don't know if I want to go that far out. <laughs> 6, 6 <a>. <laughs> let's go least. to the 15 minute. Let's say that, yeah, I'll go to 6 a.m. Let's go to 6 a.m. So by the time we wake up at 6 a.m. Which is tomorrow, 7 a.m. Eastern. 7 a.m. Eastern. We will be at, and I like ranges more because again, yeah. I, I like sense. it's really important to me to yeah to not be to communicate to people that you're not you don't know anything like we're still sitting here guessing on probabilities and theories sure. and things like that we're just making more educated guesses so i'm gonna guess somewhere when we, when we wake up that it will be probably somewhere between eight nine mm -hmm. and let me find some other trend analysis real quick that tells me how high this thing can go up because so i don't think it's going to be 10 because 10 is that big line right let's go to the one hour look hello yeah that looks oh good. that's cool yeah that looks good okay so let me zoom in so i like what is this nine it's still nine okay uh we haven't broke above nine so i think it's going to have, give me annotation again. I think that we're going to see another resistance line, mm -hmm. probably about, about right here. Okay. And so, which is interesting because if my theory is right, we've now created a new wedge from the breaking wedge, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> so you could say right here, it, if it's still in between these two, mm -hmm which is what I'm going to say is what I think it'll be at six o'clock. If it's still between these two, it's also coming to the edge of a head. 
So we could say eh, at six o'clock, it's going to be between eight eight thousand nine hundred and nine thousand, and it may break up to nine five, and it may break up down to I don't know, like eight five, right? Yeah. So you better be ready at that point in time. But between now and then, I will say that by the time we wake up tomorrow morning, we will see what is currently an eight. What are we at? Currently eight. 1699 we will see it bitcoin go up at least 200 to 300 dollars okay so okay. if i was a big big wig investor and i was investing 50,000 at a time mm-hmm. i could put 50,000 into we can do this math right mm-hmm. 50,000 uh, comes out to how many bitcoins uh, divided by what are we at eight, eight seven? Is that right? Mm-hmm. There's an eight six. Eight, what seven. is the right at eight seven right now? What are we at? Eight, eight seven, seven. hundred six. Perfect. So here we go. So we have we would have five point seven four bitcoins. Okay. So five point seven four bitcoins uh, at um, let's say it's nine thousand. So it's three hundred dollar increase. Then we would make one thousand six hundred dollars tonight. In the next pretty good if we were hours. sitting on fifty thousand dollars to invest. Yeah. In the next seven hours. Yeah. That's interesting. Not bad. If yeah. I did it leverage, I could make it explode even more. <laughs> <laughs> but we won't talk about leverage right now. Um, okay. The, uh, so yeah, so like that's something substantial, right? Um, the interesting thing is, if I keep going on these theories, I'm going to say, we'll make two predictions. We'll make a prediction that by okay. 6 a.m., here's a fairly confident prediction. I'm by fairly confident that by 6 a.m., Central, we will be between Central. BBC will watch, be it, between... watch you fail massively on all these. I'm tweeting this, by S- the way. We'll be... <laughs> Brent Token says... We'll be between... By 6 a.m. Uh, says... <laughs> We'll be between eight, nine, and nine k. Okay. With a caveat, if it's above nine k, it will be between nine two five and nine five. If it's above nine gotcha. k, okay. it won't be between nine and nine two five. And my theory is that it will have broken two triangles upward, so, so it'll it have a lot between... of momentum. So it surely can't be sitting right above it. If it's right. above 9K, it'll be what? It'll be between what? It'll be between 9.25 and 9.5. Okay. So I believe that if it does do that, it'll be up there. Uh, if it bre- if it breaks down, which I don't think it will, then I fail. <laughs> Brent failed. And trust me, I fail all the time when it comes to trading. Um, if you won every one of your trades, then I, then I don't know. You're not human. Um, <laughs> Even the best traders fail all the time. And and it's awesome when you follow them on Twitter and they're they're open about that. See, look right now. <laughs> my prediction might already lose. <laughs> look at this. Boom. Five minute candle. <laughs> Let's see if it holds. Oh, this is exciting. No. I mean it's sitting below that line. <laughs> but here's the interesting thing, and this is what I was going to say earlier. Sometimes when it sits below this line, it's enough to make this is a great time to talk about this. Okay. Fundamental analysis versus technical analysis. Why does technical analysis work? Yes. Why does it work? Because it feels like, so let me just, let me stop you there for a second. So technical analysis, when you first hear about it, when I first heard about it, it feels like uh, justifying, um, trying to see patterns in a place where there's no patterns. And it feels like giving yourself a reason to believe that it's going in one direction or another. Um, Mm -hmm. And it feels like people like even going back and like you talked about going and redrawing the line of like, well, it was really kind of crossing. And I don't know. And and then like the other thing is like, why would stock market, why would prices be governed by patterns? Like why, or why would patterns explain the, the, the prices? So anyway, that's well, they really, they, they really shouldn't, right? Like if we just remove technical analysis and we just trade fundamentally right now, I feel like this market's collapsing. So this should be worth this much, right? Uh-huh. Then we wouldn't worry about all these lines. 
-hmm. but people like to have more informed decisions. Mm -hmm. And so technical analysis has only, patterns have only continued to reinforce themselves more since we've used more technical analysis, 10, 15 years uh, or so. And then a good reason why is that everything that you see us doing right now, when we're looking at this chart, mm-hmm. um, we are right. We're we're making guesses and estimations here mm-hmm. too about things. But people are taking algorithms that they write, mm-hmm. and they're telling it, "Hey, if it breaks, you know, below this is a great timing right here. Somebody's algorithm is doing this, by the way. If it breaks below this point, right here, that's ah, terrible drawing." If it breaks below, I want to sell my stuff and and buy a short. And it will, and, or in this case, you know, it, it or I want to buy right here because I think it's going to go back up. And so they'll set their computer to hit a certain price point at a certain time and initiate a buy. Hmm. Now, what happens when a thousand computers are set to that? So you're you're basically in the same that- pattern. You're basically saying that technical analysis is created by the belief in technical analysis. Like the technical analysis Bingo. works because people believe technical analysis believe works. Technical analysis works. Exactly. You nailed it. That's you nailed so it. Weird. Technical analysis now at this point, largely in my opinion, works. This is my opinion. Another true technical analysis person might provide a different idea, but I'm not alone in this idea. Uh, largely works because trading has become more digital and automated. Uh And we're all following the same patterns. So since we're all following the same patterns, we're going to start to see a lot of the same results because we're predicting a lot of the same outcomes and we're buying based off of those predictions the same. So the longer this holds below, the more likely psychologically people are going to say patterns broken, it's going down and they're, that's going to help dictate their following actions, which is going to thus reinforce the pattern going down. <laughs> That's interesting. Crazy, right? Yeah. So like, like that's okay. why I say technical analysis is both at tweet. I, I think I texted you this earlier today. Mm-hmm. Technical analysis is both real and not real. Mm-hmm. It's not real, but it's real. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So you were wrong and it broke down. It broke down. I think my prediction is going to be wrong unless, so now the reason I brought this up now, right? Sometimes it breaks down. Sometimes it steps across the line and sometimes it doesn't break down enough or hold long enough to be substantial. Mm -hmm. And then it starts moving the opposite direction. And then it's already engaged a lot of stuff right here. Like a lot of buying power Mm -hmm. right here that can push its momentum upward. And sometimes it'll break that. You'll top see line. almost yes. like a almost like a tra- just shatter, trampoline. just shatters exactly. It'll it just like- shatter straight through it. And so that's part of the reason why earlier I said there's Does only anybody one build thing- like a physics simulation around this because it feels like to- gravity and it- physics would play it- a role in this. Do the, the velocity the, that's and why all that the kind of lingo stuff. the lingo really makes sense with that kind of stuff, right? Because because everything is pressure, weight, like strength. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the, yeah. the velocity, the momentum would totally be up here, right? Mm-hmm. If it were to, to sit there and tease us for a little while and then go back up, I promise people would have computers somewhere that said, if it goes below this line, holds below the line, waits for 10 minutes and then goes back above the line, buy. Gotcha. They'll so write that into their code. computers driving that. Like that a lot of it is. Recognition. Right. And so that's why I said earlier, a lot of people will tell you, if it goes down, expect it to go down. I say num- the number one thing to think about, and everyone has different theories on, on how they evaluate these charts. Mm-hmm. Before I think about whether it's going to go down or up, I think uncertainty has increased. Gotcha. Right. We're out of a pattern. Uncertainty has increased. Mm-hmm. And that's that's the first that's thing the, I like, think. That's the responsible um, statistical thinking. Of like, yeah. it's not it's not that I know something is going to happen or I know something is not going to happen. It's that I have greater or lesser certainty about that that event happening or not happening. Yep, got yep. it. And part sense. of the reason why I've moved away from shorter amounts of time trading is because mm-hmm. the the more you zoom in, 
often the more patterns are broken. Yeah. And like you were talking about earlier, it makes sense because the stronger, if a, if strength of patterns is made based on a length of time, then Mm -hmm. um, any short term pattern is going to have greater uncertainty than the pattern. Yeah. The long term pattern. And look at this. We might be having a comeback. (laughs) Yeah. It's still possible. You can still be right. You can still be right. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that like while we're on this call in the next couple of minutes, it launches through that and explodes. And then by the time we wake up tomorrow, it's at 9,250. <laughs> All right. So oh, a short prediction was fun. Let's okay. make a longer one. All right. Sounds good. One more and then I got to go to bed. Yeah, so. let's do that. Oh, I mean... Is anyone watching right now? Do we have any comments? I have not been thinking. Oh, uh, we had one, we had one guy jump watch. in. I, I chatted with him for a minute. Um, cool. So, yeah, we're good. I, right, I, so I, I have a separate uh, screen set up where I can do that. So Perfect. Let me zoom out because this is where I love to play more now. And, okay. and Jess hears this from me more in the 15 minutes of the one hour. Okay, mm-hmm. so we broke upward on the one hour a couple days ago, mm-hmm. and it got crazy. Uh, which was fun, and and before that, that channel goes way, 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 way back. Mm-hmm. And I can't even see it; it's going so far back. Um, it went back. Gosh, I mean, might as well zoom out, right? Uh, it went back what? Um, like two months, mm-hmm. almost. Yeah, almost two months. Two months. I mean, that was a long pattern. So there was a lot of pressure. I knew that if it went up above this, it was going to get crazy. I think. It, message in essence that if it breaks up in the next day or two you yep. expect some action and then of course we got some action um let's zoom down to the back down to the one hour all right so i think it's going to stay above that line i think that's now a good support line mm-hmm. i think that in the next week time frame it will not go below There we go. It will not go below. It's not showing me. So you're basically basing this on that previous pattern. You're now treating mm-hmm. the support line, sorry, the resistance line as a new support line. Mm-hmm. There we go. This helps. It will not go below uh, eight three in the next week. So I want to say that with the pr- with the pressure that we've had upward. Uh huh. Um, and the way that we're still making more stimulus packages and conversations, that I am betting on the. I'm betting on the on Bitcoin over the dollar, and in that battle, that means Bitcoin goes up right now. Gotcha. That's all that means, because it's because your Bitcoin is becoming more valuable than your dollar is. So you get more dollars for your Bitcoin. Um, let's see. That's your short term line. That's not the line you're yeah, using. I'm trying to here. Here's a four. I need like a four or something. Collapse the candle all the way go. down. Yeah. There. Yeah. I like that. Okay. Let's do this. I want. I want a more aggressive upward trend. That's the funny thing. You can want things and keep trying to draw these patterns, but you'll start figuring out after a while that you're trying to make a pattern fit that's not there. And if you listen to yourself, you realize you're trying to rationalize something that's not going to happen. Right. Right. The computers aren't going to let it happen that way. Right. Mm -hmm. The computers. Skynet won't let it happen that way. Okay. So this is the best aggressive trend I can find right roughly right here when it kind of stayed flat and then bounced up and exploded so so we're looking at may 7th we're going to make a prediction for a week from now yeah may 7th so it's what like right here uh yeah somewhere out there um may 7th we will be something like that mm-hmm. we'll be between 9k 
and I love ranges because I like to be right and ranges give me more of a chance of being right <laughs> if we're being honest uh, um, so whoop, whoop. Uh, it's going to be between 9k and that's probably about 10k right mm -hmm. right there uh, it's, it's a little bit so 9k and but I don't think it's going to be all the way up at it will it Let's see what that is. Oh, shoot. Here we go. Seven. For seven. There you go. Seven. Right, seven. I mean, it could be a good, it could still be a good amount above 10K. All right. This, you're going to be like, this is, this is lame. It's going to be between 9,000 and 10,200. That's a huge range, right? Yeah, but it's still making a prediction whether it's going to be up or down. A week from now i mean it's still still a prediction yeah uh, still a prediction you could form a new channel actually and say that it will stay within that channel um mm -hmm. from right here uh why not because this is all fun and i'm not actually buying on this so um now why did you go back to the same point for the beginning of that channel so? for the beginning of that channel because if we zoom in here, uh, six hours, cool. uh, you can see that we were using this channel before, right? Yeah. But it broke this channel. Yeah, it? it broke the resistance, and then that resistance became a support. And I was wondering mm -hmm. why you drew the new resistance line using the same just, point. Just because that I can't find a point further back that's still going to match it. Like okay. if you go back through this, then it's still going through that. There's not an anchor point on the other side of it that will Got help it. you. Uh, if I tried to put it right here, it would break through this. So it's just the closest pattern that I can actually find, which is still, by the way, not much of a pattern. Like that, like if you like, I'm gonna make this prediction, then ask me if I would buy Bitcoin based on this prediction. Yeah. I'll go ahead and tell you the answer. No, <laughs> I want more confidence when I'm buying. Got it. Um. Anyways, so so we'll use that, right? And then we'll say that it's not gonna go above that. All right, there. I'll widen I'll widen or narrow it a little bit. Okay. I'm gonna go now down to nine and I'll 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 bump it up a little bit because it's not gonna be hovering on the line. It's gonna be between nine thousand one hundred and nine thousand 900 on may 7th all right now if i was very confident in that and there are times when i am that confident like where i'm like i love this uh then what we're talking about right now is a bitcoin that is at eight six that on average seven days from now is going to be what is the average between nine nine and nine one like nine five yeah that would be like me claiming that you can buy something for $8,600 from now that a week from now will give you $1,000 back. Yeah. That's pretty It's a ridiculous claim. It's a ridiculous claim. Um, I'm not that confident on this right now, but there have mm -hmm. been times when I've been that confident. Right. Right. Yeah. We've been, we've talked, we've talked through some of those times and you've been like, yeah, I would probably go ahead and buy here and, uh, and hold it like until now. this point and then sell it. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, but this is fun, right? Like I would mm -hmm. say right now, how confident am I? I'm above 50% confident. That means I think it's more likely to happen than not happen. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm not up to like 90%. I'd say I'm a whopping 60%, 65% confident this will happen. All right. So let's, let's, for our wrap up here, let's go take a look at our short term prediction that 6 a.m. it will be, uh, <laughs> It hasn't already between, lost, has it? Uh, 8,900 and 9,000 at 6 a.m. And mainly, and we don't know yet. We won't know until 6. But let's go look okay, at that. Okay, let's uh, not look. Let's, <laughs> you don't want to look? You don't want to look at the pattern? Why not? Well, I guess it doesn't It doesn't matter, right? Like if, no, it uh, go to Go to your 5-minute or 15-minute candle. And let's you know see. what would be really funny? If it like broke all my patterns, but still landed right there. <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Like I told you guys. Yeah, it's, it's still it's still working on its comeback. He thinks it's he thinks it's coming back. We'll see you in the There's morning. There's another three minutes. We'll see you in the morning. Hey yo, 
Look, it's still working on its comeback. <laughs> I like it. All I right. Like it. So we'll check it out in the morning. Okay, so for those of you who have tuned in for two hours of BTC training for newbies, uh, this has been really, really fun. I've learned a lot, even more than uh, I knew going into this about uh, technical trading and um, even just getting to hear a little bit of Brent's story about um, how he got into Forex and how he got into Bitcoin and mm -hmm. how he thinks about this stuff. So it was really super interesting watching Brent manipulate the charts and kind of uh, draw patterns. And um, hopefully this was enough to pique your interest in technical analysis as well, as well as befuddle and mystify you as to why technical yes. analysis is even a thing. Um, but Brent, <laughs> um, thanks for joining us. Any any last words? No. Um, this None of this is financial advice. Clearly. <laughs> yep definitely not google why that's important to say that and also um closing notes would be uh that um you know do this stuff smart we were talking at the very beginning of this call that about like access to money anyone can buy bitcoin that's incredible that means everyone needs to be aware of their own risk because the government's not going to take our risk from this like, and not let us buy stocks like they do with stocks. They're not going to stop us from buying Bitcoin, although some countries do. Um, so if you're going to do higher risk things, know it's a higher risk. In this case, don't invest more money than you think you can. Like, Don't go sell your house. I will never sell my wife because no one can pay a good enough price for that. Right, babe? She's ignoring me. Anyways, um, you know, don't, don't do crazy, stupid things. Whatever, what I told Jess was, whatever you would do in your high investment column, unless you're extremely confident in Bitcoin and know a lot about it, don't, don't work outside of that. Don't put your savings in this. Unless you're really, really confident in it, but don't, don't do it. Like, if you're at the level of learning in this call, don't do it. Right? Be smart with your money. Talk to a financial advisor. This isn't financial advice. Cool. All right. That's what I so would say. So with that being said... We'll uh, check in and uh, on Brent's predictions tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. All right. 6 a.m. 6 a.m. Here we go. All right. Thanks, bro. Appreciate you mm -hmm. uh, you being there. And uh, yeah, it's been fun. So next time we'll probably be back to programming. This will pro. I don't know how many more or less uh, nah. episodes we'll do on Bitcoin. They're, they're fun. Um, but it was a lot of fun. Thanks, bro. We could do, if people are interested later, we could do more of a Q&A, like a, more of a, not a Q&A, uh, an AMA, where people yeah. can just ask all the questions they want to on this. But For sure. But, uh, or, you know, it'd be fun one of these times to build a trading bot. Nah, that would be super cool. That'd be a and lot And it wouldn't fun. be that hard. And CryptoWatch has the data. We have the APIs. That'd be fun. Cool, Anyways. man. Well, another time. All right. Another time. Signing off. All righty. Good night. Yeah, night.